plus y equals to 0. Uh, I think we did this before. So let's, let's put something here. Uh, x, y prime plus y equals to 0. Let's do it. This will be simple enough. And then <coughs> y of 0 is 1. y prime of 0 is, say, negative 2. And uh, find the power series solution. And let's say we're just trying to find the first 5. Okay. All right, so what do you do? You, uh, you're trying to use y equals to a0 plus a z a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed plus a a4x to the fourth plus da da da, which can be written <coughs> this way. That's that's uh, that's what you're gonna s uh, plug into this differential equation and. Uh, Solving this would mean that you're, you're trying to figure out a0, a1, a2, a3. If you know these values, that means uh, you, you know the function, right? So that, that's what we we're trying to do. And uh, by the way, what, what is y of 0? 1. It's 1. OK, uh, let, let's try to differentiate. And then, then we'll discuss that, okay? If I differentiate this, a0 becomes 0. a1, 2a, 2x, 3a, 3x squared, 4a, 4x cubed, plus da, da, da. Which can also be written as n equals to 1, n, a, n, x to the n. <coughs> And I differentiate one more time because I have to plug everything in there. Uh, there's one thing, however, I want to discuss before I plug the, plug this in. Yes? There going to be x to the n minus 1. Oh, thank you. That should be n minus 1. OK. Uh, according to this, if you have y and if you plug in 0 into this formula here, what would you get? 1. You'll get a0. Plus a1. We're plugging a zero into x. So what do you get? A1 zero. times zero. A2 times zero. A3 times zero. A4 times zero. So everything's zero. So you're left with. You're just left with a zero, right? Now, what does this condition mean then? A0 equals 1. A0 equals that means a0 is equal to 1. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for y <coughs> prime of 0. If you have y prime of 0 as into, if you plug in 0 here, what would you get? Over here. A1. A1 is the only thing that you're going to get, right? 0, 0, 0, everything 0. A1 is the only zero that you get, uh, only non-zero term you get. But look at this one. What does this mean? A1 equals negative 2. A1 is equal to negative 2. That's why they would So you can just say whatever you, it's going to be that for everything, right? Uh, well, I mean, if we had the third order, and you were giving this, the, for, for third order differential equations, sometimes you're, you can give both one uh, y zero and y prime of zero, and then also y double prime. Now, if you had y double prime of zero as three, what would that mean? A two is three. Uh, one point five. Yes, yes. Because if you differentiate one more time and you plug in zero, you're going to get two a two as your y, prime, y double prime of 0. So you would say, end up with, if this is true, then this would be what you get. Okay? So uh, it's slightly more complicated than just having 
having just uh, the y is, uh, a0 is e1 and a1 is negative 2 and all that, okay? All right, so... Uh, but if we didn't have those initial parameters, how do we... If you didn't have those initial parameters, then a0 and a1 will be arbitrary. So and which is which is what we used to have. So if you recall the constant coefficient one with method of uh, no uh, constant co coefficient homogeneous difference equations, we would have two values of r, and it will be e to the one x or e to the three x or something. You you have two functions. You do c one times the first function plus c two times the second function, right? So you always have for for a second order, you always have two free variables. And uh, if you don't supply these, yeah. you would have a0 and a1 as the two free var variables, and everything else will be uh, uh, written in terms of a0 and a1. That's what's going to happen. Okay, so uh, uh, we had the, uh, for those of you who just came in, uh, we just uh, figured out that if you have y0 as 1 and y prime of 0 as negative 2, that would mean that a0 should be 1 and a1 will be negative 2 just by writing out the, the y's and plugging in 0. <coughs> so that, that's something to think about. If, if these are not given, then a0, a1 are arbitrary and those will be the free parameters. That's what we talked about so far. Okay, let's, yes? Is that always going to be y of 0? Oh, uh, right. Uh, is if it, if it wasn't, it would just increase? So, so that's actually a, a very good question. So if the initial conditions were not given as y of 0 and y prime of 0, if it was instead y of 1 and y prime of 1, then when you plug it in here, you're going to get a0 plus a1 plus everything equals to 1, uh, some value. This one also equal to some value, and there will be impossible to do. Now, uh, actually, I, the next example, I'm going to do something like that, OK? And uh, uh, the, <laughs> the way you resolve it is, rather than trying to, to find a solution that looks like <coughs> this, you, you put the equation in form of a n x minus 1 to the nth power. Then you'll see that in that case, you can, you can handle that initial condition very easily. Okay. So that's that's uh, that's that's that'll be my next example. Okay. All right. So uh, going back here now, let's plug everything in. So y double prime. If you differentiate that one more time, you get n from two to infinity, n n minus one, a n x to the n minus two, plus x times y prime is this thing sigma n from 1 through infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1 plus y is sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n equals to 0. Now, uh, if this x is multiplied inside this, it's x to the first power, so 1 gets added to the exponent, so that's what you're going to get. After this, you see that the only one term needs shifting. Sometimes you may have two terms that need shifting, but here it's just one term. Which one? The first one. So we have to replace n by n plus 2. And that will make this as what? n equals to 0. Because if you replace this n by n plus 2, n plus 2 equals to 2. Solving that for n gives you n equals to 0. Uh, this will be n plus 2 and n plus 1, right? So this will be n plus 2, n plus 1. This will be n plus 2, and this will be n. So that's what you're going to get for n equals to 0 and after. OK, now let's try to see what we get. Uh, for n equals to 0, what do we get? Just 1 or oh, 2. two times. This one and the last one, what, what is that? 2an2. 2a2. So 0 is power. So 2a2 is what you get from the first one. 
This one doesn't produce anything. This one is zero. A zero, and that's it, right? <coughs> so that's what you get. So this this thing above is same as this one for n equals to zero, but starting from one and afterwards, you get everything start manufacturing terms. So you can put everything into one giant gigantic sum where uh, where you have n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two. And then this plus this is n plus one, a n times x to the n. And then uh, the, the theorem about power series in mathematics says that if this is supposed to be zero for, for some infinitely many values of x inside one, one op open interval, then the only way that can happen is when all the coefficients are added to zero. So this should be zero, that should be zero. And uh, that, that's what we use to solve it. So let me leave that erase the other ones. So what we're getting is that uh, 2a2 plus a0 is 0, but we, we just figured out that a0 is what? 1. So that means 2a2 is, if I move the 1 to the other side, it's negative 1. So a2 is negative 1 half. Okay. And then the recursive relate recurrent relation is a n plus 2 equals, if I move this to the other side, it's negative n plus 1, a n. And if I cancel these two and divide this over, I get a n plus 2 equals negative 1 over n plus 2 a n. And that's valid for n greater or equal to what? Two. No. Uh, one. It's here. Yeah. Right? It's How do you know if you want to solve for a n or a n plus two? You always solve for the higher one because uh, a zero and a one, once they're determined, that will determine a two, a three, a four. So the recurs recursive relation, uh, recurrent relation should be solve for higher ones so that you can express the later terms by the previous Okay, so this is true for n one or greater, so let's start with a n equals to one and see what it says. When n is one, a three is negative one over three a one. What's a one? Negative two? That's your a one, right? So Negative one third times negative two is two thirds. N equals to two. A four is negative one over two plus two, that's four. A A two, right? And I'm setting N is two, so two plus two is four, two plus two is four, two. What's a2? We have it here, right? Negative 1 half times negative 1 fourth, then positive 1 eighth. And then a, oh, that's already 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that's already five terms. So uh, or, originally we just agreed that we were just going to write down the first five terms. Uh, so what's, what's your solution y then? Y, we started out by saying that your y is this thing, right? So now we can just plug in, happily plug in the values that we got, and then uh, write down what y is. Y is therefore, uh, a0 is 1, a, a1 was negative 2x, a2 is uh, negative 1 half x squared, a3 is 2 thirds x cubed, a4 is 1 eighth x to the fourth plus da 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 da. Okay. And you can see how 
we'll be able to compute more and more terms if we wanted them. Right? Uh, in fact, if you can write a computer program which will calculate <coughs> to 100th term, and if you wanted the approximate value of this function for, say, y of 1 or y of 2, you can use that uh, gigantic summation and plug it in and get an uh, approximate value for it. Okay? You can see that these numbers get smaller and smaller, right? They should, if you want it to converge, it should. 